On for the tip, it's the tallest player in Syracuse history, Naheem McLeod, and seven foot Harlan Obioa. Purple Eagles win the tip. We're ready to go. Thank you so much for joining us on your Thursday evening. New York State rivalry right here. Not exactly a rivalry with Niagara struggling this season. There's Luke Bumbleo. Mod Henderson, the leading scorer. Syracuse faithful on its feet, waiting for that first bucket. Henderson, the jumper, off the back rim. McLeod on the rebound. McLeod did a nice job against Oregon last time. He crashed the boards well. You know, McLeod's a guy that we just need him to be a presence out there. We aren't looking for him to get 20 and 10. If you can be a presence, run the floor, be big out there, alter shots, he's going to make an impact when he's out there. Starling misses from deep, and Tucker on the rebound. Long pass. For Niagara couldn't go. They turn it over. It's going right back to the Qs. You know, I was talking to Greg, uh, Coach Greg Pauls before the game, and he's looking to limit Syracuse's transition points and make them play in the half court. But you have to take care of the ball if you want to be able to do that. It definitely seems like that's where Syracuse is at its best when it can run fast and play. All the great Syracuse teams have played up-tempo. They played with good pace. Uh, and this Syracuse team is, is another one that loves to play up-tempo and they excel at it. Vince down low, the spin, the shot, and the score. Syracuse on the board for two. And it's by way of its leading scorer, Judah Mintz. You know, even when he, he gets stopped, he's so crafty with his footwork. He's one of the best guards around the rim, one of the best finishers in the country. You played with some great guards in your day, and you, you know, you weren't too bad yourself. Well, where does Judah Mintz rank in, in terms of college guys that you've seen? You know what? He's up there with some of the best of them, and I played with one of the best guards of all time at Syracuse and Johnny Flynn, and he has that Johnny Flynn-type flair. Uh, I'm not going to compare him to Johnny <laughs> Flynn, but, you know, having shot 101 free throws in, in only 11 games this season, I mean, it's hard to keep guys in front of him, and, and he usually gets to the basket at will. There he is down low, covered by Luke Bumbleo. Bell up top. Mid-range J is cash. Now here's a guy, 6'7", lanky. If he brings energy and effort on the defensive end, I think he's a whole different player. He's a guy who's a sharp shooter. And you know what? If he brings all that package that he has, he's, he's an NBA prospect. You know, for such a young guy, it seems like his shooting form is just so smooth already. Yeah, he, he's one of the best shooters uh, you know, to come through. Because he just has to stay out of his head, be confident, and continue to play. Here's Ahmad Henderson. He had, he had 23 last time out against Binghamton. On the J, it's short. Mints on the rebound. Averages about three of those a game. Here's Starling. Over to Taylor, turned over. There goes Randy Tucker, looking for an option. Obang Menza blocked away, out of bounds, and it's staying with Niagara. You see that last turnover Syracuse had, it, it, it's just about you know creating space and, and be able to move without the ball. Yao Obang Menza fouled on that attempt, went up with it, rather. No foul on the play. Luke Bumbleo inbounds to Harlan Obioha. Seven-footer turns it over. Justin Taylor down the lane, knocked away. Nice crafty play to stop the transition. Yeah, Justin Taylor just has to go in there strong. He has it going up against, against a guy 5'7". Just go ahead and use your strength and bully him to the rim. Vince down the lane, the shot no good. Playing with the long sleeves today, and he follows Henderson. And, and that's what we talk about with Judy. He could be an outstanding defender, but silly fouls like that, you, you know, obviously he's frustrated about, you know, the shot he just had, but just get back on defense, keep him in front of you, because he is capable of being, you know, one of the best defenders in the country. Syracuse team has played some very solid defense lately. Only went up 63 to Oregon, 68 to Georgetown, 70 to Cornell. Those are their three straight wins. Yoha dumps down low. Obang Menza looking for a Get shot, can't get it off. Dumps it down to Obioha, blocked by Taylor. Back outside to Henderson from deep. Off the front rim. Niagara can't capitalize. Starling, a J. Yes. 
J.J. Starling, his first points of the day. He's been shooting hot lately. And his confidence continues to grow. I mean, he's a guy that we talked about earlier in the show. He just, he, he's capable. You know, McDonald's All-American. You know, he just needs to get out of his head and just go play ball. There's Harlan Obioha up top. Averages eight points and eight rebounds. He turns it over. Nice jumper from J.J. Starling, 6-2. Syracuse on top of Niagara. We'll be right back. The school record and <laughs> completion percentage is uh, pretty impressive, man. He's a leader of young men. I mean, being a point guard and a quarterback and then obviously playing, Chichesky, playing for Chichesky at Duke. Uh, you know, Greg Paul says uh, came a long way and he will continue to progress in this game. Now you two have known each other for a long time, both 05 guys playing the McDonald's All-American game together. You said you knew early on that he was going to have the career he does. I did, you know, while he while I was out uh, messing around and he was in the room studying the playbook and I knew right there and then that he was going to be a heck of a coach and, uh, you know, Greg has done an unbelievable job so far in his fifth year at Niagara. The squad's hanging tight with Syracuse right now, 6-5 after the Luke Bumble 3 Here's Judah Mintz going up from mid-range. Gets the end one on the jumper. You know what, one of the, one of the best at getting into the mid-range area. He has one of the best pull-ups in the country. You know, I know the NBA scouts want to see a little bit more consistency at the three-point line, but, you know, he's a heck of a player getting downhill. He's a heck of a player in that mid-range, and boy, I tell you what, he is tough to stay in front of. He's developed his shooting stroke and certainly been to the line plenty of times this season. 101 free throw attempts this year. at second most in the country. Only to Purdue, Zach Eady. Who's 7'5". Yeah, not yeah. bad company. Not bad. You know, it's pretty unbelievable after 11 games that you're getting to the free throw line, you know, over 100 times. People aren't doing that in the season. Maybe two seasons. Yeah. So it's, it's a pretty impressive stat. He's hitting those shots too. 78% on the season. Helped him get to 20 points a game. Luke Bumbelo, mostly covered by Starling. Looking for an outlet, he's got Dre Bullock. Louisiana Tech transfer. Looking for space down low, kicks it out. Braxton Bayless, pushes off. Bumbelo from downtown, yes! You know what, and, and that's a tough shot right there, but a great defensive possession until the last four or five seconds. You gotta finish the defensive possessions if you're Syracuse. That's two threes for Luke Bumbelo. He's got all eight points for the Purple Eagles. Here's Judah Mintz, has five points so far. Fakes a kick out, takes it himself, do not go. Rebound by Yao Obang Menza. Bayless, back to Obang Menza, no good. Cloud with the rebound. You see the athletic ability there of Chris Bell. He's a guy, if he's engaged and locked in, he's had a game this year where he had four blocks. I think he can really be a really good defensive player out of the perimeter and also in transition. Niagara back in transition. They add two more. That's Trey Bullock on the board for the first time today. Purple Eagles with the lead. Syracuse trails by one, about six and a half minutes in. Probably not how Coach Autry pictured this one going to start. And when you've got a Greg Paulus-led team, they're not going to back down to anybody. Yeah, Niagara's going to come in here. They're excited to play in the Dome. You know, the, the last game before break, they're ready to come in here and, and get an upset. It, we, we said it was a trap game for Syracuse. they got to be ready to play. There's Bayless down the lane. Cut off by the and there's that presence that we talked about earlier in the game. Vince two-handed slam. Syracuse back in transition where they belong. Defense to offense. That's, they've been doing a great job of that lately. Getting deflections, getting blocks, getting steals, and getting out in the open court and playing fast. Judah Vince, seven points so far, leads the way. Braxton Bayless getting crafty. Dishes down low, out of bounds. Syracuse ball. Now that's one thing right there. Here's defense into offense for you, Devo. Exactly how SU wants to do it. Yeah, and, and, and on that last possession, speaking of McLeod, he does a great job protecting the rim, but sometimes he catches himself getting too far away from the basket, and that's where you see guys slip behind him. If that's going to happen, you got to have those scores drop in and, and help McLeod. But he does his damage when he can stay around the rim and protect the rim. 
Wholesale substitutions for the Orange. Kyle Cuff, Quittier Copeland, Benny Williams, Malik Brown all checking in. There's Copeland down low, gets fouled. Quittier Copeland's headed to the line. He's had a nice pair of games lately too. He's, he's really starting to fit in on this team. Well, you know what, he's the Swiss Army knife for this team. He's a guy who's super versatile. He's 6'7", he brings the ball up, he can pass, he can drive, he can make plays at the rim. You know, one thing about his game, he probably needs to get a little bit more consistent with his jump shot, but he's a guy who can come in and do a lot of things, and you see over these last few games, he has been making an impact when he's out on the floor. It seems like he's a guy on this team that everyone really gravitates to. He's kind of a natural leader in, in the way he talks, and he, he's kind of a goofy guy, too, makes everybody laugh. That's definitely the guy you, you need on any team. Super high-energy guy. Yeah. You even see him when he's on the bench. He's clapping, he's waving the towel, and, and you need a guy like that on a team. When stuff's not going good, he's a guy who can come in and bring that energy level up where it needs to be. And even when he wasn't playing a ton last year, still kept that energy, too. Absolutely, and you need that, especially with a young team. you got to keep that energy high. That's a big thing, a big attribute to have is, is big energy and effort. Bumbleo, another ah. three. How about it? Luke Bumbleo, 11 points. He's a guy averaging 28 minutes, averaging almost nine points, but he's a shooter. On the scouting report, they had shooter circled. You gotta find him out on the perimeter. Syracuse has to do a better job of locating him. Bumbleo shooting 33% from three on the season. Averaging just over eight points per game. He's really become a threat for this Niagara team. He had 16 points last time out, 14 the game before. He's leading the Purple Eagles tonight. 13 12 Syracuse, and Luke Bumble is the reason why. You know what, Jack? This guy is coming out competing at a high level. He's playing off of DHOs, one, two dribble pull up, spotting up. He's a guy that can really shoot the ball, and he's competing at a high level. Syracuse has to do a better job of locating him and getting up in him and forcing him to put the ball to the basket. Bumble a ball state transfer. He's a grad student at Niagara right now. He's always been a shooter, but he's been through his ups and downs. His junior year at Ball State, he shot 36% from three. And then last year, only 28%. Had to refine his stroke, and he certainly has tonight. 11 points, he's hit three threes. Yo, Jack, these guys are gonna come in here and compete. I don't care, they don't care if you have Syracuse across New Jersey. They're excited to play. They're gonna come up and compete at a high level, and Syracuse has to bring it. The New York State foe, these two have been playing since 1910, over 100 years back and forth. I think they want some of those New York State bragging rights if they can get them too, especially with their head coach being a Syracuse guy. Yeah, you know what, they've done a great job of keeping Syracuse out of transition for the most part and making them play in the half-court offense. Niagara tries to keep it in, that was Drake Bullock with the hustle. Couldn't keep it at Syracuse ball. Well, the Orange have come out of the gates a little bit slow. Why do you think that is? You know what? Like I said earlier, Niagara's doing a good job of keeping them out of transition, and that's where we really, ex where Syracuse really excels at. They have to get better movement in the half court, and they got to be able to get downhill and create plays for themselves and get the ball to open shooters. Here's Copeland, kicks out to Williams for three. Yes! Benny Williams puts up a tray. Had a solid outing against Oregon. Eight points off of 4-4. Four of four. Maybe he's turned a corner. It's a great sign for seeing Benny Williams hitting his first jump shot. He's a guy who can impact the game if he's engaged and locked in. We all know he's one of the most athletic guys on the floor. Poked away by Brown. That one heads out of bounds and staying with Niagara. Boy, Malik Brown is always in the passing lanes. I tell you what, he get, it seems that he gets three or four of those every single game. I, if we looked up deflections in the country, he has to be in the top ten because he is a guy who has some of the quickest hands. And, and he's a guy who's definitely coming into his own. We saw what he's capable of last year as a freshman. Slow start to the early in the season, but he's really picked it up these last few games. Brown over two steals a game, second in the ACC. Henderson off the mark. Vince looking for an outlet. He'll take it slow. Williams from downtown. No, that one's short. Bayless on the rebound to Henderson. No, that one's long. Can't keep him leaving him open. He's gonna knock down some of those shots. He, you gotta find him on the perimeter. Copeland spin over in the fillet. How about it? A little bit of flair spin and a little bit of loop de loop to the hoop. <laughs> Quadir, he's bringing it, man. He, he's exciting to watch. The spin move and then to slow down and get the finesse off the glass. That's impressive. Hey! 
Good defense on the other end. Cuff pushing. Jumper. Oh, in and out. The toilet bowl spin. Obioha with the rebound. Henderson, the point guard, controlling from up top. This is off to Bayless. Out down low, Obiola finishing through traffic. The big fella, seven foot, 280 pounds, making his contribution early on. We talked about earlier how he lost about 60, 70 pounds. Used to be a, what, five-star football player back in the day. He transformed his body, and now he's the starting center here at Niagara. All through quite a journey, put here Copeland. Gets blocked on the other end. Here comes Marble. Goes up for the layup. That one's no good. Harlan Obioha, like you mentioned, Eric, was once almost 350 pounds, an offensive lineman in Kansas. Had some great offers, too, some Power 5 schools. He came into Niagara two years ago, halfway through the year, and he was still a big fella. He wasn't in shape to play basketball, and they certainly got him right. You know what? It shows the dedication he has to the game of basketball and getting his body right, getting his mind right. Shout out to you know, the Niagara coaching staff and training staff for helping him you know, lose those 67 pounds. That's, that's not a small feat right there. That's, uh, that's pretty incredible to lose that amount of weight in, in, in that uh, you know, amount of time. So, you know, shout out to him for getting his body right and going from football to basketball. That's a, that's a big transition there as well. One that his head coach certainly made, Greg Paulus. Yeah, he and he did it well. <laughs> well, Obioha has been a strong contributor for Coach Paulus, averaging about eight points, eight rebounds a game. He's the first seven-footer for Niagara since Sean Shiano, 1988-92. to 92. It definitely means a lot for a small team like this to have a big man down low like that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's not a lot of big guys. You know, basketball period, it's, it's more of a perimeter-oriented game. You know, obviously you see that in the NBA, not as much in college, but, you know, to see a, a, a real seven-footer, you talk about Baycott and Zach Eady and, and guys like that, but in the conferences like Niagara, you, you don't see those guys a lot. So he has the potential to come in there and, uh, you know, really make a presence in, in their conference. He's certainly helped Niagara keep this one tied at 17 apiece. Malik Brown at the line, he cashes the first one. Malik Brown, a contributor on both sides of the ball, averaging about seven points and five rebounds a game. Kind of a, just a silent assassin, Devo. He stays quiet and goes to work. You know, brings his lunch pal every single game and just goes to work. I mean, you, you need those type of guys. He's, he's quiet, he doesn't say much, but you know what you're gonna get out of him each and every night. 1917, Orange on top of the Purple Eagles. Starling with the full court pressure. Here's Obang Menza, poked away by Williams. Trying to recover down the lane. Another tip away. Defense and offense. Williams flies. Can't finish the dunk. Oh my goodness, he just took flight. And Jack, if you're going up to finish, that's what you're gonna try and finish <laughs> like that. He almost just put him on a poster. Benny Williams, that would have just been mean to Randy Tucker. He's looking up at the video board. He, he wanted that one. And we see a different Benny Williams, don't we, from the start of the season. These, you know, obviously Oregon having eight points, four for four. But even early on in this game, you, you just see a different energy with him. And it's great to see because if he's playing with that energy, you know, he can, he can be a big contributor for the Syracuse basketball team. Engaged on the defensive end, too. That last defensive possession started with him trying to poke the ball away. Absolutely. And you see the guards cuff uh, uh, JJ up. They're playing hard. They're playing up. That's what they need to do. You, you can't let guys get comfortable, see the, see the defense, see over top of the defense, and, and just let them, you know, do whatever they want to do. You got to get, get up in them, make them be uncomfortable, you know, especially with Henderson. You, you got to make this guy play. There's been question marks about around Williams most of the season. He didn't play against Canisius, New Hampshire, Gonzaga, Cornell. He's come to play today. There's Henderson. Kicks out to Tucker. From deep, no good. Brown fights for the rebound. Williams has it. Up to Cuff. Down the lane. Nice little Euro off the glass and in. That's a tough finish. You see Cuff last game come in and really was the spark against Oregon that really started that run, you know, going in late first half into the second half. And, and Cuff is a guy who's capable shooter and also a guy who can get out and play in transition. That's what you saw there. Well, we talked about the bench points against Oregon. That came big time from Williams and Cuff. 
Malik Brown has a nice block. Both of them are in it today. Both went down the lane. Step through and a score. The shrug of the shoulders. Quadir knows he's got another bucket. Syracuse pulling away. Or really exciting ball so far. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, Coach Jack, she has them on the right track going forward. Uh, and, and I think they're just going to continue to get better as, you know, as they progress this year. They're back in action here at home on New Year's Eve against Notre Dame. You catch that one on ACC Network Extra. ACC Network, rather. There's Bumbleo at the wing, covered by Cuff. Back to Henderson, down the lane, the floater off the glass, no good. You know what, Niagara runs a lot of good stuff, a lot of good movements, getting guys where they can get opportunities to get to the bucket. Great take. Copeland through contact, an angry finish. Jack, he's came in and we talked about the energy that he brings, he's changed the game. Having himself a day so far, he's got seven points. He's just gotten real crafty in how he finishes, huh, Devo? You know what? I said it to somebody the other day. He kind of reminds me of like a Sean Livingston type. I, I, I may be aging myself, but you know, six seven can bring the ball up, super crafty. A guy who can put guys in their spots. I mean, he's having a heck of a, a you know last what three four games. Oh, tough with a nice step and a shot off the glass. Two more points for him. He's got four. The bench is showing out. Four for Cuff, four for Benny Williams, and seven for Quadir. You know, uh, Syracuse, you, know, you go back to the Bayheim days, we're only playing seven guys, Jack. And now Syracuse, the depth that they have, we talked about it against Oregon, you know, having 44 bench points, and now we're talking about Copeland and Cuff, you know, just picking up where they left off. That's Emmy Rudai Sire with the end one bucket. Now, Eric, you didn't really come off the court much, did you, when, when they were playing six, seven guys? I tell you what, no, I, I would be mad if I did. <laughs> I, I, I need to be in that game, coach. <laughs> He's certainly kept you in plenty. Here's Emmy Rudai Sire at the line. Sophomore out of Adelaide, South Australia. Played at Barton Community College. He's going to contribute here for this Niagara team this season. Australia, huh? you know what? I lived in Melbourne, Australia. For really? Eight months, so. One of the best countries I have ever been to in my life. So, shout out Australia, man. My guy from Southwood. Adelaide? So Adelaide, yeah. Oh, great city. What was it like there? I mean, it was beautiful. I, you know, I was in Melbourne, so it, yeah. it's like top, you know, four places to live in the world, they say. Shopping, and you got downtown, and then right down the street is the beach. So, the best of both worlds, I guess. Not better than Syracuse and Detroit, though. Not better than Syracuse. <laughs> definitely not better than Detroit. <laughs> the lob. Oh, almost a one-handed slam by Bullock. We've seen a couple of almost Sports Center top ten dunks today, but no dice. Rudai Ray gets slapped on the arm. Foul on Syracuse. And you know what, Jack? This one thing Syracuse has to put those defensive possessions together. You can't just have two good ones and then take three, four plays off and then try to get back into it. You got to find a rhythm defensively, and you got to start putting those possessions together. That's a fifth foul on the orange so far. That one went on Justin Taylor, his first. There's Randy Tucker. Step back, Jay. He kicks it out instead. Over to Bumble. Oh, it's wide left. Out of bounds into the stands. Syracuse has to stay disciplined on those ball fakes. Niagara's doing a good job of you know, using their ball fakes and getting Syracuse off their spots. They got to stay disciplined. Adrian Autry led squad playing mostly man to man defense this season. It's been a solid defensive unit. Allowing about 70 points a game. There's Copeland. Another two for Q. I tell you what, if he can add that to his game, uh, you know, mid-range pull-up and be consistent right there, it, his game goes to a whole nother level. He has been playing at an unbelievable level, you know, over these last four games. Syracuse has made five of its last six shots. Copeland's got nine points. There's Bumble up. He's got 11. Kicks it out to Tucker for three off the mark. Great contest by Cole. Cuff pushing the other way, the spin, and the lay. Oh, no good ground on the putback. Helping your teammate out. I tell you what, 
Cuff and Copeland have came in and changed the entire energy of this game. And I was tough on Cuff early in the season. You know, I thought he wasn't doing what he's capable of doing. But these last two games, you know, Oregon and, and now Niagara, he is really showing what he is capable of. There goes Bayless. Covered closely by Brown. Bumbleo from deep. Oh, no way. Look, Bumbleo. 14 points and four threes. Bumble like low you, there. you know what? He got a little bit of Devo in him. You know? <laughs> but you know what? On the scout report, shooter, you got to be on top of that guy. Even with the hand in his face, he's going to knock it down just like he shows you right there. The sharp shooter for Niagara is keeping the Purple Eagles in this one. The Syracuse turnover by Copeland. Here comes Niagara. Tucker, the fake. Now Lowe lays it up. No good. Second attempt can't fall either. The Purple Eagles come up with nothing on the other end. You know, and that's one thing that Coach Paul has said pregame. You know, if we can limit transition opportunities for the Eagles to make them play in the half court, you know, we'll be happy. And, and you don't see that too often from Malik downtown Brown. Downtown huh? Malik Brown. <laughs> First three of the season for Malik Brown. On cue, this Syracuse bench has been great today. And the coaching staff told me of uh, you know, Syracuse, they told me that he's capable of shooting the ball. I guess we just haven't seen a lot of it. He's working on that jumper, and it's paid off today. Got his first three. He's got seven points right now. There's Dre Bullock. Three on the shot clock. Go deep. Bumble no good. Brown gets the rebound, his fifth of the day. The communication isn't there with Bumbleo. I mean, he, he, yeah, the guy is just, he's hit, you know, what, four threes. He, you got to communicate it. Thirty-five, twenty-three. Cuse on top. Malik Brown from deep. To continue that. Now, you mentioned that in your days with Coach Bayheim, you really only saw six, seven guys play. This team is deep. And you know what, that, that's just the way college basketball is now. You, you got so many guys who are versatile and athletic. And, you know, with this team, you could go 9, 10 deep. And everybody who, you know, gets an opportunity on the floor has an opportunity to make an impact. There's Bumble all the other way. Gives off to Bayless in the corner. I mean, Rudai Siray, cross-court pass. Niagara, quick ball movement. Olek to Obang Menza. He cashes the J. That's the deficit to 10. Rainier Hema checks into this game. Only his third game of the season. Big man filling in for Malik Brown. At, pra at practice yesterday, really notice that Rainier Hema is a, a vocal leader of the bigs. He's a smart guy that really knows where everybody should be playing. And you know what? He, he reminds me of a guy who Syracuse fans know by Musakeda. He's the guy who, you know, wouldn't stuff the stat sheet, but he was a leader on the floor. He was the guy who was communicating. He was getting everybody in their spots. And Hema is in that same type of mode as, as by Musakeda. He does the little things right, hits his free throws. You need guys like that, Jackie. Everybody has a role on the team, and everybody has to play it. And he's one of those guys who plays his role to a team. Shot clock winding down. The three's off the mark. Bell on the rebound. Hema in his second season with the Orange, transferred from Duquesne last year. There he is with the ball, gives off to Starling from deep. No good. Mintz fights for the rebound, but it's Bullock. And despite the miss, I, I still want JJ to shoot that shot because it, it, it looks smooth. Steal from Mintz, averages about two of those a game. That's fourth in the ACC. Bell from deep, off the mark. Syracuse so far today, two for nine from deep. And you know, we know Bell can shoot the ball, but I think we can get that shot anytime, especially with a guy closing out. Give him a pump fake and then get to the rim to show your athleticism. And there's Hema protecting the rim. What a nice job so far. Mintz to Starling. Starling so far has two points, only one for six though. 0 from three from three. Had a good game against Oregon, 14 points. Before that, the stellar one against Georgetown as well at 21. We're at three of three from deep. There's Bell, mid-range is long. You know, I think JJ just passed up an opportunity to shoot that shot. You see, J you see Judah telling him to shoot the shot. He was coming off that, you know, up off the corner and he did have an opportunity to knock it down. Three minute long scoring drought for the Cues. Here's Bumble, oh, no shortage of points from him today. He's got 14. 
from way downtown. He buries it. Luke Buffalo keeping Niagara in this one. I tell you what, I don't know if Cuse has learned their lesson yet. Get up on that man. He's shooting the ball at an extremely high rate, and you see his confidence is through the roof right now. And you know, Coach Greg Wallace is happy with how Niagara is playing right now. He's got range, and Adrian Autry isn't happy about it. He calls timeout. They want to talk for Henderson. So, you know, Coach Paulus has done a great job of running sets and getting guys in spots and giving them opportunities to get open looks. Syracuse has been a different story. The Orange have missed six in a row, haven't scored in over three and a half minutes. About 10 seconds to go in the first half. Going to go into the locker room with some momentum. Here's Mintz from deep. He gets fouled, headed to the line for three. Bad foul right there. Well, whether it's driving down the lane or pulling a three, Judah Mintz knows some way to get to the line no matter what. Well, again, if, I, if I'm Bayless and I look at the scouting report, you know, what does Mintz really excel at? Getting to the rim, getting downhill. Yeah, he can, he's capable of three-point shooter, and he's definitely improved this year. But you, he's not a guy that you want to go out and, and foul on the three-point shot. Now you're exactly right. He has shot the three well this year, about 41%. But still 50% of his field goal attempts come from at the rim. He's done well on shooting 60% at the rim this season. And, and tell you what, you know, just being a, the professional scorer that I was, I, I think that you being able to get yourself to the free throw line, you know, knock a couple down when you're not hitting a couple jump shots, now you're just starting to get a little bit comfortable, more comfortable seeing that ball go in the basket, and that's when you get a little bit more confidence in you know, the rest of the game. Bumble on, throwing up a prayer. Well, finally he missed one, huh? <laughs> you know what, he's had a heck of a first half, and I think uh, Coach half court, they have to be able to execute, move the ball, and get open opportunities for each other. Only nine fast break points for Syracuse, but mostly half court offense. There goes Mitz, the hop through. The way is nothing but net. <laughs> Good well, that, start. That's one way to do it, right? <laughs> Just get downhill and, and get to the, and make an unbelievable finish. I mean, we've seen him do that numerous times over his career here at Syracuse. Unbelievable finish. Here's Luke Bumbleo. Leading score today with 17 points. He gives off to Randy Tucker. Bumbleo, five of seven from three point range today. He's hit all five threes for Niagara. Here's a step back. Downtown, no good. You know, every time he puts it up, yeah, everybody's thinking it's going in. No, he, he's just, that's how he's playing right now. He, he's playing with a, you know, super confidence, and he's looking to score that basketball. Mintz, no good from deep. There goes Henderson. He gives it up. Oh! Mintz a one-handed slam, and an and one to go with it. And we talked about that about with McLeod. And just, just not being able to react and being aware, you know, of where his man is. You know, his head was turned, and then you got a guy coming down the middle of the court, you know, looking to finish, and now he gets dunked on with AN1. It's a nice pass from Ahmad Henderson, too. Hasn't contributed in scoring yet, 0 for 6, but on the board with an assist. That's points number four for Yao Obang Menza after the free throw, number five, rather. You see Niagara with a little bit of three, you know, quarter court pressure. Trying to slow that Q's down, Q's, uh, offense down a little bit. Another foul on Mintz to full court pressure. We saw one of those earlier. Jack, we talked about it. Just get back and stay in front. They're, those fouls are, they're stupid fouls. You, you don't need that, and especially from a guy like Judah. We need you in the game. We need you, to, you know, you're Syracuse's best player. Just fall back and get play, play defense in the half court. Mintz has two on him now. Syracuse has two in the second half. It's Obioha outside. Bumbleo. He's kicking it out somewhere. Henderson and Obioha. Miscommunication and Greg Paulus made the catch. You know, right there, you, you can see on the throwback from Bumbleo, you know, the, the big fella just got caught out there. He probably should have just dove to the rim. There's Justin Taylor. Scoreless so far today. Jay is off the mark. Okay, men's with the board. And Jack, he's a guy that we need to see be more assertive. He, you know, he's a guy who he, he looks like he's playing tentative. He's in his head a little bit. Go out there and be aggressive. You know, if they don't go in, you got an, uh, another opportunity coming back. Obang Menza working down low. He hits the Jay. 
Now you're right, Devo. Both Taylor and Bell, a couple of the best shooters on this team. Not big contributions so far, just a combined one for nine. Well, we, you know, Cuff and Copeland and Brown have been playing so well off the bench that I guess you really haven't been talking about it, but we, we're going to need those guys going into ACC play. Syracuse is going to need But I was a slasher. I like to get to that yeah. rim. So maybe you're a, you're a mix of Judah Mintz and Joe Girard then. I'll take it. Those yeah. are two solid players right there. Niagara only trailing Syracuse by seven. Mr. Judah Mintz, he has 12 today. Four of eight from the field, four from the line. Here's Bumbleo. Has five threes today. Scoreless in this second half so far. Only two and a half minutes in. Well, then Menza down low. Covered by the smaller Taylor. Obioha, Cooper's off the mark. Rebound, no bang, Menza. Tries to go up for it, can't get the shot off. You see Niagara is trying to take advantage of Taylor being that smaller defender. It's worked out a couple of times. Where is it, that left hand? You know what, Miz has one of the best left hands in the country, and I was a guy who I, I loved to use my left hand, but you know, after watching Judah play for a few years, he is up there with having one of the best left hands I've seen. Now you talk about slashers. He's one of the best in the country already. Averaging 20 a game. Fourth in points in the ACC. Fourth in steals per game, too. And there's another right on cue. And there's what we're talking about, him being that capable defender. Step through, kick out. Right back to him. Over to Bell from deep. Oh, you bet. You know what, JJ's not gonna shoot it, but that guy sure will. Chris Bell, he's a sharp shooter, sniper. Chris Bell, that's his 30th three of the season. He's shooting about 38% so far. One of the best shooters on this Syracuse team. 45-33, the Cuse on top. In the corner, Tucker from deep. That one's off the mark. Push. Out in transition. Bell snags the pass, puts it up off the glass, and he gets two more. Greg Paulus wants a timeout. He's got to stop this Syracuse squad. 47-33, Orange on top. We'll take a quick break. <laughs> you know what, Greg? He, he, he's just a great guy. He's a, he's a great leader of these young men, um, and he's not. He's he's just going to continue to excel um, at the head coach position. You know, whether it be Niagara or somewhere else. Paulus, a two-sport star at CBA. Like you mentioned, a McDonald's All-American basketball player, also a state champion winning quarterback. There's Bumbleo from deep. That one's short. Paulus went on to play four years at Duke. Scored over 1,000 points for Coach K. He led the ACC in assists per game his freshman year. And then after four years of basketball, he came back to Syracuse to do a grad year. Here's Mintz from deep, step backs off the mark. The crowd tried to put it back, but couldn't. I'll tell you what, though, the separation right there was the leap. Taylor hits the jumper to extend the lead. And you love to see that for JT, just a guy who seems like he was lacking some confidence just to see the ball go in the rim. You know, hopefully that brings his confidence back up to where it needs to be. It's a 9-0 run for Syracuse. Those are Taylor's first points of the day. Like I mentioned about Paulus, when he came back to Syracuse, played quarterback in 09 and Doug Marone's first season as head coach. The squad went four and eight, and he set a record completing 68% of his pass, the highest in a single season for a quarterback at SU. I, I tell you what, I, I, I think as you see JT knocked down another three. We talk about his confidence. He, I know you're hearing me out there, but <laughs> for, for uh, a guy like Paulus to not play a sport for four years and to come in and you know, break a school record is uh, pretty amazing. Yeah, to tell you the truth, I, he probably could have been an NFL quarterback if he would have st stuck with football. Yeah, when we were talking the other day, you said he, he could do, he could go anywhere he wanted to out of high school, not just in basketball, but in football too. He was a 2004 Gatorade National Football Player of the Year in high school. That was his junior year. The same year that Adrian Peterson, Marshawn Lynch, and Calvin Johnson were also playing high school football. Wow. And then coming from CBA, CBA is a football school. They're still one of the top uh, football schools right now in the state. Just a high school legend here in New York, and he gets to come home and coach against Syracuse. He's got family at this game. Said yesterday he's just really happy to be back. It's really just a special time to be back home. Yeah, a Syracuse legend. Who's Bumble up? Over to Bayless. 
oh. to the rim. No foul called out of bounds. It stays with Niagara. And I tell you what, Jack, I know you see Syracuse in the 2-3 in the out of the out of bounds, but J.J. Starling has been doing a great job of chasing Bumbleo off those screens and forcing him into tough shots. Yeah, he's going to make some like we saw in the first half, but can he continue that the way that the Orange are starting to pressure him? And now we got Cuff, who is, is a premier defender up on him. Big second half adjustment. Shot clock winding down, and he can't hit that shot. 0 for 3 in the second half. Here's Copeland. Nine points off the bench today to Starling. No good on the three. And you can still see that little hitch in the shot right there. He just needs to catch it and go right up through. Taylor defends that shot well, and Syracuse is back in transition. Copeland down the lane, through contact. Can't get that one to go. Bumble with the board. Over to Marble, the spin. The shot off the glass, and he finishes. That was a tough move, you know. Giving Syracuse a little taste of their own medicine, getting out in transition. Niagara finally getting a shot to fall. Down by 14. We're in the second half. Taylor from deep. Oh, he nails it. Let it go, young man. And, and right on cue again, I guess, ever since that first shot, we've been talking about him, and his confidence seems to be at where it needs to be. JT, it's just good to see him playing well. Now, he just seems like your classic shooter where if he's in a rut, you got to shoot yourself out of it, right? And, and you know what, Jack? Not just a shooter. He's, he's, a, he's got a really good body. He's, you know, led the team in rebounding for, you know, a lot of games this season. And he's a solid defender. He, he has a lot that he can bring to the table. He goes Taylor again. He dumps it off that time. Copeland in the corner from deep. That one's short. Brown on the rebound to Starling. Oh. Off the glass and in. And there's Brown. Just a knack for the ball, being around the rim. And you know what? He's a great interior passer, which a lot of big men aren't at all. Malik Brown, seven points, eight rebounds, and an assist today. Oh. Braxton Bayless finishes through contact with the and one. Yeah, I mean, talking about Malik Brown, I mean, we, we you know, talked about Copeland being the Swiss Army knife, but he's the same type of guy. He, he does so many things on the floor well. Uh, he's a guy that you just, you know, you, you need a guy like this on the team to be able to fill that role, and, and he does it to a T. Well, that's kind of what makes this Syracuse team special, is that you've got, like you've called them, multiple Swiss Army knives off the bench, someone as talented as Benny Williams, a shooter like Kyle Cuff. Just a lot of options. Uh, well, we talked about their depth. You know, when one guy's not playing well, next man up. And, you know, they got a lot of guys who can come in and contribute. They got guys who are versatile and athletic. Uh, you know, and that's why they can play the way they play, fast and up tempo, and get up in you on the defensive side of the ball. Taylor can't get that three to go. 0 for 4 from deep today. Got four points, though, for a pair of twos. Bayless wants a screen, won't use it. Down the lane, the fake, the spin and the score. Nice yeah. move. And I tell you what, young guards watching this guy play. Went into the paint, played off two feet, got his defender up in the air, in control on balance, came back around that left shoulder with the right hand finish. That was a great finish by Bayless. Now you mentioned earlier that that's something Niagara has done a nice job of, is the fakes, whether it's passing or shooting, just getting those extra open spaces because of it. Well, it's funny. I saw them in the pregame before, uh, you know, before the game. They were working on that exact move that Bayless just made. So, you know, you can see why it works. Foul on Niagara. One on Lance Irving. Syracuse on top by 14, 57-43. We're headed to break. A month of him being on the job, the recruits that he's bringing in, he's got me excited to watch yeah. Syracuse football next year. Uh, he sounds like he can recruit just about anybody to play for his team. Got a nice job on the recruiting trail and in the transfer portal. Putting together a nice squad for next year. Pull back here in Syracuse, the Orange are up. Over the Purple Eagles by 14 with Quittier Copeland on the line. He was fouled by Lance Irving before the break. Copeland hits the next one. Two up by 15. Here's Braxton Bayless. He's got five points, two rebounds, and two assists today. One of the only returners on this Niagara team. They only return him 
And Harlan Obioha from last year's squad. Goes up for the layup. It's off the mark. I'll tell you what, Cuff got a piece of that. Showing his athletic ability. We talked about he has the, and then running the floor. Got a finish. Almost had it on the other end. Now he's a sneaky good athlete. He surprises you. Yeah, there's that Kyle Lowry body. Or that Paul Pierce body, which you might not think he is super athletic, but he's a guy in, in showing it in, in Oregon last game on the fast break dunk. And then right here, you know, with the block. I mean, we talked about those fouls. We, you know, Syracuse has, and, and Red is telling him right now, you know, the two with Judah and then the one right there with Kyle Cuff. You, you don't need those. Play, play aggressive, but stay in front, but keep your hands to yourself. I, I'm, telling, I'm talking to my kids right now. Keep your hands to yourself. Cuff's got two fouls so far. He's only his first full season of college ball. Played two games at Kansas last year, but tore his MCL and PCL in practice early on in the season. Had to sit out the rest of the way. I'll tell you what, Jack, Niagara's not going to go away. You know, they're excited to play here in the Dome. They're going to compete. You know, regardless if they get down, they're still going to play. Syracuse has to finish these plays. Only a 13-point deficit right now. There's Malik Brown on the perimeter. He has a three-pointer today, his first of the season. There's Copeland cross court to Benny Williams from deep off the front rim. Yeah, but right there, that offensive possession, it was side to side. You've seen the ball going side to side. No downhill penetration, not getting the defense to collapse and get a kick out. You know, when Syracuse plays like that, you know, that's when they're going to struggle. Well, Syracuse plays its best ball and it's in transition and scoring in the paint. This team's scoring almost 40 points per game in the paint. It's most since the 2009-2010 season as Bayless is tangled up with Brown. Ball will stay with the Purple Eagles. They score plenty in the paint. And, and, and I mean, that's what they excel at, getting out, playing fast, getting in transition, getting easy buckets. Obviously, Judah and JJ getting downhill, you know, making plays for themselves. But... When you get into ACC conference play, as we saw against Virginia, they're going to make you play in that half court. You know, if you can't execute and move the ball in half court, get downhill, get by your defenders and get an advantage, you know, they're going to struggle. You did, you mentioned earlier, that is something you've seen them do better as of late in these past few games, is the half court offense, not just relying on the transition. Yeah, and they're capable. It's all about just getting movement, right? Once you can get movement, now you can get that defender off his spot, and that's when you can take advantage, get downhill. Now that brings in the help defender, and now they're scrambling. You know, you could kick it out if he comes out, and then you kick it to the corner or wherever. It's just about movement, and then trying to find that advantage where you get the defenders off the spot, and then you can attack. Another jump ball headed Syracuse's way this time as Starling takes it up the court. He's got four points and three rebounds today. There's Copeland in his bright pink shoes to spin. Works it all the way around. Starling at the elbow, out to Williams. Driving down the lane, it's picked off. Again, stagnant, stagnant on the offensive end. Bayless, dishes, Bullock, Bullock by Cuff. Copeland recovers, pushing in front, the spin. Oh, trying to get the pass to Williams, but he couldn't. Mr. Crafty trying to get it done. Yeah, Mr. Crafty, but it didn't make the simple play. <laughs> Here's Kyle Cuff getting up for this one. He's got some bounce. What, ever since we said he about it, talked about his athleticism, he comes out and gets two blocks. They're hearing us out here, Jack. Yeah. There he is from deep. Oh, Kyle Cuff nails it. We got to keep talking about these guys. Right that, that, that's all it is, man. They, <laughs> they're hearing us out there. Getting the job done. Devo's got the golden touch today. Seven points for Kyle Cuff off the bench. Bumble down the lane gets fouled. And, and, and just right there, I, you know, it was a tough play, a tough finish. But when you're making a guy make two, three dribble moves, change directions, you're tired after that. So, you know, coming back down, he's not going to have the legs he had going into his shot. So, you know, Cuff did a good job. He just has to be able to finish that defensive possession and, you know, cut off that angle to the rim. Here's Luke Bumbleo at the line. 17 points today, but... None here in this second half. Well, make that number one. He's 0 of 3 from the field. Ball State transfer. Been a great scorer for this Niagara team. 17 today. He had 16 last time out. 
He's had over three threes in three straight games. Out of Newcastle, Indiana in his fifth year. A former Indiana Mr. Basketball finalist back in 2019. They didn't win the award because that was Trace Jackson Davis's to win, the high flyer that played for the Hoosiers of Indiana. Indiana is known for some big time basketball. Their high school basketball games could get 25. Brown soars and slams. Great roll to the rim, Malik. Big energy off the bench for Malik Brown. Two handed jam extends the lead. Great heads out by Malik right there just to be able to stop that from continuing. Cross court pass from Bumbleo. Bullock hits the deck. It's a foul call. Called that one on Malik Brown. Soaring through the air and finishing big time. Nine points for Mr. Malik Brown off the- On a good note, against a good Pittsburgh team who was scoring the ball at a high clip, averaging 81 points a game. SU playing Pitt on the 30th, then they go to Duke this, or January 2nd, then BC in North Carolina. Not an easy stretch to the start of ACC play, but something tells me none of these stretches in ACC play will be easy. Well, I, I tell you what, every game that you play isn't gonna be easy. Even this game, you know, Niagara, yeah, they're three and seven, but if Syracuse overlooks a team like this, you know, it could be a loss. We talked about the trap game. If, ter if Syracuse is engaged and locked in, I mean, they're, they have an, a, talent, a, most, a talented roster as anybody in the country. You know, we talked about their depth. Uh, if they're connected on the defensive side of the ball, they're communicating, they're getting, playing fast. And then we talked about the half court, if they can execute and move the ball, they'll, they'll be able to compete with anybody in the country. Obang Menza hits both free throws. Niagara going full court. Here goes Cuff facing pressure. Now Syracuse will have nine days off before it plays Pitt. They go on a Christmas break. Do you think it's tough to come back from that long of a layoff, or is it good to let the legs rest? No, I think it's good to let the legs rest. You know, Whoa, okay. Copeland to Benny Williams. Now, is that the Benny Williams that we're trying to see, okay? We talked about his athleticism. He's the most athletic guy on the floor. When he can do that, he's engaged, he's locked in. Again, this Syracuse basketball team is a totally different team when he does that. There goes Benny Williams on the rebound again. Headed the other way, he loses this one. Obang Menza gets it right back. Ball tipped away. Blake Brown defending. Can't finish that one. He gets it the second time around. Now going back to Benny Williams. Play within your strengths, right? I mean, you know, you're not a guy who's really going to bring the ball up and push it, get it into the point guard's hands or a guard's hands, and then get out and run the wing and get another lob for a dunk. Syracuse up by 14. Kind of where this lead has been most of the second half. Not fully pulling away because this Niagara team's playing tough. They're going to compete, but you know what? You got to give Syracuse credit. They've done a good job of taking the taking care of the ball so far in this game. The feed from Copeland to Brown. He lays it up and in. That's assist number five for Quidier Copeland. Mr. Do-It-All. Blake Brown's got himself a solid day. Two 11 points and eight rebounds. And on top of him being a, you know, just having a knack around the rim. He's one of the top defenders at his positions in the country. I mean, just how he could hedge out, how he could switch, how he's able to get deflections. Talk about defense. How about Benny Williams on this block? Climbing the ladder, two hands, not making it easy. Well, it seems that Syracuse, you know, you, you look at you know, uh, the typical Syracuse forwards, we always, the Syracuse always has some of the most athletic guys in the country. I mean, you go back talking about, you know, guys like Wes Johnson and, uh, you know, he had a 46 inch vertical, you know, CJ <laughs> Fair, guys like that. So, you know, this team is no different. You know, we talked about the depth that they have and everybody who seems to come in in that forward position is an athletic guy. I always think of James Sutherland in that category too. And he can shoot that thing. Yep. He had one game he had, I think he had 10 threes against Arkansas. Bayless with the contact puts it off the glass. Having himself a solid day, he's got seven. Bayless has been impressive getting to the rim, getting downhill, and finishing tough, tough contested finish. Vince throws that one off the glass. I think he was confused whether he wanted to shoot or give it up to Benny Williams in the lob as Bumbleo hits the deck. Yeah, he just got caught in between thinking he was going to go up or pass it. Either way, it's headed for the Golden Eagles after the foul on Quadir Copeland. That's his third so far today. 
And, and I think another thing is, you know, we talk about a Syracuse team, they are young. Even though they're freshmen last year, you know, played a majority of the game, right? They have that experience. Decision-making comes into play, right? You, you still want to make those, those right reads and those right decisions. And then defensively, when to foul, when not to foul, right? We're not, we don't have to foul, you know, on, on the full court. Get back, play defense, especially when you know you can keep those guys in front of you. Now, it is a young team, but Adrian Autry after Oregon said that we feel like a veteran squad now because of you know, how hard the schedule's been, getting to play against Gonzaga and Tennessee and all those tough games. They've kind of been in all of these competitive situations already. These guys have grown up quickly. Well, we mentioned last year, a lot, a lot of these freshmen were playing big minutes last year. So they have that game experience. Uh, and then coming into this year, just feeling a little bit more comfortable, even though they are sophomore. But these guys have game experience and they've played in some big moments. So, you know, they know what to do. A whole lot of sophomores that get rotational minutes for this SU team. Four of them on the court right now. And Benny Williams, the eldest member of the group, a junior. There's Mintz up top. Crossover. Couldn't kick it out. There goes Rudy Searot. He loses it. Williams is right there. Get it up to him. Here's Mintz. Taking it himself. And one. Judah Mintz is a menace down low. Can't tough, stop him. Tough. You know what? Making up for that, you know, the previous play, and that was him just not recognizing the defense coming in and helping. He should have kicked it out earlier, but, you know, Benny Williams gets a steal, and then he gets it back out, and, and, and that's where we excel at, getting downhill, getting in transition, and, and like we talked about before, Judah Mintz is one of the elite finishers in the country. Judah Mintz with a nice lay-in through contact. Headed to the free throw line once again. I think he gets his mail delivered to the charity stripe. He lives there. I tell you what, and I don't think people understand how difficult those finishes are. He, he does a great job of controlling his body while taking the contact and still being able to finish through. Couldn't nail that free throw. Niagara corrals it. Back on offense. Syracuse offense has been hot. Hitting five of its last six. Bayless moves it all the way around. Quick ball movement. Oh Obey Menzel loses it. Foul call. You know, right there, you know, Syracuse did a great job of scrambling it and making Niagara keep making that extra pass. And we talked about finishing that defensive play. It, it, it just hurts you as a team when you do a great 25 seconds of defense and then you follow those last two. Syracuse with 10 fouls this half. Any foul will put him on the line for two. Now Obey Menz's first shot is off the mark. He has 11 points and 11 rebounds. That's his first free throw miss. Three for four now. Some added size on this Niagara team. We talked about Harlan Obioha earlier, the seven-footer, but to have a 6'7", 6'8", guy that can move like Obeying Menz is really important for a smaller team. He's pretty versatile. You see him, you know, he's playing inside, outside. He's done a good job around the rim. We've seen him hit a couple of jump shots. And he's a good player for this Niagara team. Full court pressure by the Purple Eagles. Starling looking to free up space, and he gets through the pressure. Menz waves him off and says, you take this. Out to Copeland. Down low to Brown, oh, the two-handed jam. Malik Brown letting his presence be known in the paint. And really, we, you know, we could go down there every single time if we want. We, we could really dominate this team. We we'll just impose our will with our size. Tough defense, that one's out of bounds, sticking with Niagara. Syracuse team, in the last few games, the Orange have certainly played some tough defense, getting tight on guys, getting in the passing lanes. Really a, a tenacious style of D. And, and they have, we talked about, they have the versatility, they have the depth to be able to get up and play that style of defense. I think the biggest thing for them early on was rotations were slow, communication wasn't there. And over these past three, four games, you could really start to see them coming together. Here's Starling, fighting through the full court press once again. Vince, off the tip. Here's Copeland, through contact, off the glass and in. Man, they have multiple guys that can finish tough shots at the rim. Being able to go up and, and take the contact and then be able to finish through the contact, it's a tough finish by Copeland. Bumbleo, a nice finish. Hold that. Copeland, that's <laughs> Bumbleo getting to the rim. 
He said, I'll take what you did, maybe make it even a little better. 73 60, Syracuse on top. Outstanding, just like they were against Oregon. One of the members of that bench, Malik Brown, he showed out today. 13 points and eight rebounds. And he barely misses any shots either. He's five of five today, shooting over 70% on the season. Talk about a guy that just knows his role and plays with his strengths. That's Malik Brown right there. Malik Brown has, I mean, we saw it last year as a freshman. You know, he, he came in and showed what he's capable of doing. And now, obviously, in his sophomore year, he's going to have a bigger role and get more minutes. And he is exceeding um, what Coach Red has thought he could do. Judah Mintz calls timeout, facing that full court pressure. Done a nice job taking care of the ball today. Syracuse only six turnovers. The Orange here in the Dome, but Syracuse football is down in Boca Raton in sunny Florida. Syracuse taking on USF in the bowl game tonight. Six and six in the regular season, looking for win number seven. Newly led by Fran Brown. You mentioned earlier just doing a nice job and bringing in new recruits. He's doing an unbelievable job. I mean, the best job I've seen since I've been here in, in, in a month. I've seen more, you know, four and five star recruits than than I have in ten years uh, <laughs> come here. So he, he's done an unbelievable job. It, you know, people are excited about you know Syracuse football, and it's great for the university to be able to have Syracuse basketball and Syracuse you know football competing at a high level. Now you mentioned building a team. And in Adrian Autry's first year, yes, a lot of these guys are Coach Beheim's players, but when you look at guys like Kyle Cuff, Naheem McLeod, and J.J. Starling, those are guys that he brought in. He's really kind of lucky to have this group that, you know, you said earlier is just great to have in your first year. And I tell you what, Coach Red has done an unbelievable job of just letting these guys play, feeding these guys confidence. You know, you can make a mistake, and I'm still going to let you play play through it. You know, guys need, like, need that, especially nowadays. Kids are a little bit different. And I think Coach Red has done a great job of giving these guys confidence, you know, as they, you know, continue throughout the year. Syracuse eight and three on the season, taking on Pittsburgh next. That's on December 30th. Tough ACC schedule ahead. Shot clock winding down. Hits from deep, can't get it to fall. Brown on the rebound. Copeland down low, no. Can't finish and attended Niagara's way. Malik Brown keeping the, keeping the play alive. I mean, that's what he does. He's just a guy, he, he gets his hands all over, you know, all over types of balls, you know, deflections, you know, defensively and offensively, keeping plays alive. You know, he's a guy that I would love to play with. Nine rebounds for Malik Brown today. Surprisingly, Syracuse and Niagara both have 35 rebounds. Not an area the Orange have excelled at this season. There's Bayless with the runner. He hits that. Cuts the deficit to 11. They're not going to quit. These guys are going to compete. Their coach is not a quitter, I tell you that. He's a guy who competed at a high level in his career. He's going to be able to you know, give that to these guys as well. Vince, the spin off the glass, can't finish. Oh, that would have been incredible. Bumble all the other way. From deep, no good. Judah Mintz going for the 360 layup. The John Wall shot right there. I tell you what, that, that, that would have been a tough finish right there. But, you know, keep it as simple as you can, man. I, I know he can finish that, but you know, sometimes you just go and lay that thing up. Starling from deep in the corner. Yes. That, you know what? That looked great. Smooth, right to the pocket, boom, and right through it. No hitch. We know he, you know, he was a McDonald's All-American coming out of high school and he was labeled a shooter. You know, we know he can shoot the ball. It's just about being confident. And we know that guy can shoot the <laughs> Speaking ball. Speaking of shooters, Jeez. Luke Bumbleo. Hitting three number six on the day. He's got 26 points leading the way. Syracuse on top by 11. J.J. Starling hitting this three. And like you mentioned, he was a sharp shooter at ball. Second half. Hasn't made it easy for Syracuse. The Orange still only have six turnovers today. The least on the season is seven. Mintz off his foot. Turnover headed Niagara's way. Just like Coach Paulus drew up. That full court press going to work. Judah Mintz's second turnover of the day. Well, we jinxed him, Jack. Yeah. We, just, we, we jinxed him again. That's the announcer's jinx. There's Quan Marble Jr. with the two. 
holds it within single digits. And Syracuse just wants to finish this game strong, not only to get a win, but having that momentum that they're in feeling good about how they're playing, you know, going into the break. Another turnover. Purple Eagles jump right on it. Here comes Buffalo to Irving. Down low, Niagara turns it over. Here comes Mintz down the lane. One-handed finish off the glass and a sigh of relief right there. Sigh of relief, you know, both teams turning the ball over back and forth. Bayless through contact. Nice finish off the glass. Tell you what, these last three, four minutes, Syracuse has just been lackluster on the defensive end. The effort and the energy hasn't been there like it needs to be. Mintz, the lob. Brown. That one's the dagger for the Qs. And Syracuse is going to end up winning this game, but you know they got a lot of things they have to look at going into ACC play if they want to be able to compete you know, with some of the toughest teams. Have a day, Malik Brown, 15 points. There's Luke Bumbleo, can't get it to go. Syracuse will have to dribble this one out. Dejected look on head coach Greg Paulus' face. Coached one heck of a game today, that's for sure. You know what, he's a leader, man. He, he and, and I told like the story back in 2005. You know, he was in his room looking at the playbook, looking at the scout. And from that point on, you just knew this guy was gonna be a head coach at some program. And you know, he, he's gonna continue to get these guys better. Uh, he, he, he's an elite head coach. Great to see JT knocking it down, playing well. I think he's in the double figures now. Taylor hits the triple, and you're right, Devo. He's got 11. Three threes for Mr. Taylor today. Syracuse has four players with double digits. And I tell you what, Jack, if, if you have your guys like Chris Bell and, and Justin Taylor able to knock down jump shots, it's just going to make it easier for Judah and, and, and JJ getting downhill and be able to get into their driving lanes. Because if they're knocking down their shots, that defense can't collapse like they want to. Taylor's done a decent decent job this season shooting. He's about 32% from three coming into this game. Hasn't really been asked to score a ton. Only has four games in double digits, and that was Cornell, Chaminade, Canisius, and New Hampshire. Number five today is he has 11 points. He's shot the ball really well, three of four from deep. Also three rebounds, too. But I, I also think he's a guy that's capable, and, and I think if he went in and, and was aggressive and more assertive, you know, Coach Red wouldn't say anything to him. He, he wants him to do that. He wants him to be aggressive out there. It just gives us another option offensively. Syracuse dribbles this one out and moves to 9-3. and three. The Orange have won four in a row after a win over their New York State foe, Niagara. 